All right, so in chapter four, we're going to be talking about compositing and the different techniques um, that go with compositing, such as uh, render layers, render passes, um, the different shaders that you can output. And I'm going to take, I'm going to talk about how all those can be used, and we're going to go into a post application like After Effects, and we're also going to uh, do a little bit of fusion. And I'm just going to talk about the whole process of, of going from Maya. Uh, rendering out layers and passes and kind of putting them back together and having some more control over it, your render. So in this in this lesson I want to talk about render layers and render passes. So what are render layers and what are pa and render passes? They are basically um, a way to export more information and get more out of your renders from Maya. So with the render pass um, the render engine will use something called a, uh, a frame buffer and what the frame buffer does is take your rendering and extract information out of it such as reflection, uh, specular sh um, shadows, um, depth information, even motion information. You can do motion blur in post um, and that's a, it's really a good uh, thing to use because it's very quick. It, you only have to render once to get all those different images out. Whereas with render layers, um, you're actually rendering out multiple scenes with um, different kinds of uh, techniques and materials and different things that you want to do, but you actually have to render out more than once. So with render layers, you use over here, you're going to use, you go into this layer tab and you're gonna, we're going to use this render tab right here. And this is where all your render layers can happen. So right now, um, by default, we have a one master layer that holds all the scenes information, such as the lights, the models, the set, everything. But we can create a new render layer. So let's say I want this character to be in its own render layers. I would select the character, and then I would select this button to add whatever I have selected into a new layer. So now if I were to click on this layer one, only the character is in this layer. So I can name this you know, character layer. But if I were to render this out, I wouldn't see anything because there's no lights in this layer. So we're going to go ahead and go back to the master layer. And I want to talk about uh, render passes. So uh, with Maya, uh, you have to use Mental Ray to be able to access the, uh, the pass system. So if you go into Mental Ray and select Passes, um, you're going to see we've got this render pass system set up. So um, in this image, let me go ahead and take a render, and we can see the different kinds of properties that... Um, our render has so let's take a quick render all right so here's our render um, as we left off uh, we've got our three-point lighting setup but we want to take note of some of the different things that are in this image such as the reflections that we can see within his armor and some of the shadows and the specular highlights in his eyes that we created using the uh, render pass frame buffer we can extract those um, different things individually so we can manipulate in post so let me go ahead and I'll just save this and we're gonna go ahead and minimize that so we want to associate some different passes with our master layer so right now we, we have no, no uh, different kinds of render passes created so if we click this button right here then we're gonna get a whole list of all the different kinds of passes we can create and the ones that I want to work with are the specular, because we have some specularity in the eyes and in the armor. So let's go ahead and create that, and that's going to move that into the scene passes. Uh, we can do a shadow. There's two, there's two different kinds of shadows. There's the regular shadow, and then there's a raw shadow, which is, this has uh, some color information, that, and this has, uh, they just worked a little bit differently. So I like to use the raw shadow. And let's also uh, do the reflectivity, so the reflection. Go ahead and create that, and I think that's all I want to work with for now. But as you can see, there's a whole list of different things you can play around with. So let me go ahead and close that. And if I were to just take a render, nothing would happen yet because these aren't associated with this current render layer. So if we shift select all of these, make sure we're on the render layer that we want to work with, and we're going to go ahead and associate these passes. So now these uh, render passes are assigned to this render layer. So let's go ahead and take another render and see what we get. 
All right, so now that our render's finished, you're gonna notice that it's pretty much the same, it's exactly the same thing. Um, but the difference is because now that we've associated these passes with our render layer, that there's some more information here. Um, and how you get to that information is if you come into the render view, go to file, and go ahead and go to load render pass. And here you're gonna see all the different passes that have been rendered with this particular render. So if uh, the one I wanna check out is the reflection. So let's go ahead and click that, and you're gonna see this thing pop up. So if I go ahead and expand this out to see our full render, you're going to see now we, we can see just that reflective information. So you can see kind of his hand in, in that armor reflection and all, all different kinds of reflections in there. And it's just that reflection information. So now we can use this image uh, in our post application and kind of adjust that. And it'll give us more control over how much reflectivity we want rather than having to render and see if that's too reflective and then render again and adjust that way. This way we have full control and in a post application it's much quicker. So we can go ahead and check out the different uh, render passes. So specular, um, go ahead and move this and expand it out. And right now only his eyes, you can see it's kind of just his eyes uh, have specularity. So we can go ahead and render that one out as well. And our shadow. So let's go ahead and check out our shadow. So you can see all the different shadows that appear uh, within his armor and all that. So, so you can see how um, this can be pretty powerful. Our render time did go up about twenty, about twenty-two seconds, twenty-three seconds. But it is it will it does save us a lot of time rather than having to render out a minute um, each frame. So using that render buffer is really powerful and will save a lot of time, especially um, when you want to manipulate these things. So I want to talk a little bit more about the render layers now. So let me go ahead and close that. Render layers allow you to render out um, different situations within the same within the same scene. So let's say I wanted to separate each individual light um, with it with its own render layer, so we can manipulate each light in post much quicker. So let me go ahead and uh, go into my perspective view, and we see we have all our different lights. So I want to create a layer for each light. So let me go ahead and since we have one set up already, I'm going to go ahead and add another light or add a light to that. So let's start with our key light. Let's select that, select our render layer, right click, and go to add selected object. So now it's just our key light in here. So if I were to come in here and take a render. All right, so you can see how this render is only affected, or the character is only affected by that key light. So let's go ahead and do that for each light. So let's go back. Let's create a few more layers. So let's select our character and add him three more times. We'll select our fill light, right click, add selected, and we'll call this um, fill light layer. And we'll change this one as well. We'll do key light layer. And let's now do our rim light. So add that. And then we'll go ahead and do one for our uh, specular. Well, since we already have the the render pass set up for our specular, we don't even have to worry about this. So, but although we can, if we want a little bit more control, let's go ahead and add that spec light layer. All right, so now we have all of our renders, our render layers set up for each individual light. So you can see how this can be um, used if you want to have different lighting schemes or different lighting setups and you want to kind of group them together and render them out separately, then we can adjust them all in post. So now what I want to do is go ahead and save out all of these different passes, renders, and layer, render layers, and we're going to go ahead and move into After Effects and kind of put them together and we can see the power of manipulating each individual one uh, in post. So let me go ahead and switch to my render layer, make sure camera's right. And we've already got our key light, so uh, I, instead of using the ren the Maya rendering, the batch render, I'm going to go ahead and just save each one individually, just for testing purposes. So I'll go to save image, and this is our key light, so I'm going to go ahead and go, I'll just save them on the, to the desktop. And we're going to go ahead and, we'll just save them all into a folder, so if I just click desktop, uh, and we'll create a folder. Uh, We'll just call it test renders. All 
and we'll call this one our key light. Yeah, we'll just call it yeah key layer. And we'll use I'll just use PNGs for now. Um, when when you want to put your final output, you're gonna want to maybe want to do a higher quality like a TIFF or an EXR with more uh, depth information. But for this purposes, I like to use just a simple 8-bit PNG um, just to test out and see what we get. So we'll call that key layer or yeah key layer. You can call them whatever you want. And I'm gonna go ahead and do this for each individual one. So I'm going to move on to the fill light and take a render. All right, so you can see um, our fill light, how it's isolated. And I'm going to go ahead and save this out. And we'll call this, uh, we'll just call that fill layer. So I'm going to go ahead and do this for the rest of the render layers. All right, so I've saved out all the different render layers. Uh, now I'm going to go ahead and save out each. Uh, of those passes that we created. So, so here's a spec one. I'm going to go back to the render with our render passes. So I think I have to go back one more. Or I didn't save it. So I'm going to go ahead and take another render. I'm going to go to my master layer because this has uh, all of our passes assigned to it. And I'm going to go ahead and assign, uh, I'm going to go ahead and render out and save those passes. So I'm going to go ahead and take a render. All right, so I've rendered this uh, layer with all the different passes, and you can see we have our specular and all the different passes. And I just want to worry about the specular pass for now, but we got to think about something of how we're going to put this image back together once we've kind of separated it. Well, if we have our specular pass, um, what are we going to what are we going to combine this pass with? We can. So if we see our our spec, if we talk about a reflection. What are we going to combine this reflection pass with? What are we going to layer it on top of? We can combine it with this one, but remember this already has reflective information on, on it. So we're not going to want to add reflect reflective information on top of reflectivity. So we're going to need to actually assign one more pass to this layer. And we're going to want to do the, the beauty pass without reflections or refractions. So this is going to give us a separate pass that will not have any reflectivity uh, information. So let's go ahead and assign that. And let's go ahead and take a render. All right, so now that this is done, let's go ahead and check our passes. And now we can see that we have this beauty with no reflect or refraction. So now you can see that this is what we want. We want a render without any of that reflection. So we can go ahead and combine this with the reflection, and we can adjust the levels and all that. So let's go ahead and save this out. And we'll go ahead and put it in our desktop uh, test renders. And we'll go ahead and stay with the PNG. Uh, and we'll call this, uh, we'll just call this uh, uh, beauty pass. And then we'll do the same for our reflection. All right, so I think this is just about all the layers and passes that I want to work with. So next, I'm going to go ahead and go into After Effects and talk a little bit how we can kind of combine and adjust and tweak and tune and all the all the different layers to get a better look, rather than having to render out and render out. So let's go ahead and move into After Effects.